Hi, guys. Let me just get a good look at y'all. Nice. Love it. You got a posse. And they got tulips here. It's very fancy. It's very fancy. We're, we're high class tonight, Hello. Al. Um, <laughs> I feel kind of like we're, we have so much in common. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Or maybe I'm just telling you. And I'm you just an older choice. version of you. And less skilled. <laughs> I don't think that, that doesn't do it for me. That's, that's, uh, You're always so kind to me. That is a shoddy description. <laughs> um, I'm here, um, my mother's a big cookbook editor, so cookbooks are serious. Oh, when she says big cookbook editor, she's like talking about the Steven Spielberg of cookbook editors. It's like, true. Like her mother was like, hello. Stood over me. I had the standing over me with a red pencil. For the first five years, my own draft for my cookbook was the. <laughs> and then just my mother, like, you know, the pencil and the fingers. <laughs> so, but we're here because we're talking about your book. Thank which you. I re which I read through and I really, I, I, I wanted to make a lot of stuff. And I read a lot of cookbooks. I, I collect them. And I also, I just bought your book, Aww. your cookbook, The Home Cook. <laughs> which as it came in the mail the day I left for my book tour. So like, oh, you know, so when I go home, I'm gonna start cooking out of your book. So you cook out of mine, I'll cook out of yours and we'll like Instagram each other. I love it. I, um, <laughs> I, they asked me, Food Network asked me what, a, a while ago to come out to California and cook with you on an episode of your cooking show. Yes, thank God. And we made cannolis. It was so fun. And we broke Sausage part of and Facebook. Peppers. What? Oh, sausage. Oh, that's right. The cannoli thing that we, uh, yeah. I mean, like, we broke Facebook. Yeah, I mean, people were just like. It's like 20 something million views. Yeah, I it's mean. It's only because Alex was on with me. Yeah. I, w I could not have done that without her. I think it's because we have a lot of relatives in Italy. We got everybody <laughs> to look at it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I want to know about this book. It is uh, Valerie's Home Cooking. You will be buying this in the lobby immediately after? <laughs> Subliminal, non-subliminal messaging. <laughs> and I will sign it for you, if you're nice, or if I feel, <laughs> no, I would be happy to sign it for you. It, it is my pleasure. Um, it is named after my show specifically because I feel like I gained so much knowledge since I started Valerie's Home Cooking three years ago mm -hmm. um, through the culinary team, the culinary producers, and that amazing crash kitchen in the back and just hanging out with them. It's my favorite place to hang. Even on Kids Baking Championship, there are, uh, there's that crash kitchen in the back and they're always cooking something so amazing. I learned a lot through these um, amazing cooks and chefs who are uh, skilled in the culinary arts and, uh, and were schooled in the culinary arts and I never was. I was schooled at the knee of my grandmother and my mother. So to actually, like be in the trenches with them and them to like listen to me and, and learn from some of the skills that I have, which I didn't think were anything. And then they were like, oh no, that's a good idea. I'm like, oh my God, I'm somebody, <laughs> you know? They like me. They, they like me. So what, because there's something about a culinary artist and they are culinary artists as you are one, uh, that is breathtaking when you see them in the kitchen really doing what they do. And, um, I just want to bring those culinary arts that I learned, um, not through school, but I still want to go take a baking course for a week because I want to learn the science behind it. Wear and elastic pants. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I heard. Oh yeah. Duff, Duff wears like a baggy around his oh, jeans yeah. to hold them up. There is no belt. That yeah, no, Duff. nothing. But um, I just, I want people to feel through this book, through my show, how um, you don't have to be schooled in the culinary arts to be really great in the kitchen and have a lot of fun in the kitchen. And I think your book does the same thing too. You don't ever talk down to any of us and I don't ever want to talk down to anybody. No, I agree. Yeah. I've been cooking for as long as you've been acting. And I've been cooking longer than I've been acting. <laughs> uh, well, I've been acting like I've been cooking. <laughs> But, okay. I've, but that's why I, I couldn't believe how, how the weird kismet of this happened because I've been a, a cook much longer than I've been an actress. And I've been an actress since I was 11, 12 years old, but I've been cooking longer than that. And then I think all of the acting and all of the shows that I was able to do gave me the confidence and the skill set to be able to take my cooking onto the camera because those two skill sets are very different. To be able to cook and to be able to, um, then explain that on camera. It's a lot harder, like when you watch um, 
the uh, next Food Network star and you think, why aren't these people getting it? It's a lot harder than it looks. So I think by being an actress for as long as I have and then also being so comfortable in the kitchen, it was almost like this slice of heaven that opened up to me and oh my God, I have this whole new career that feels more real than everything, anything I've ever done. So what about acting did you bring to your cooking? I mean, I kinda, I, I'm fascinated by this because sometimes I come home from a day of being on Chopped or being on Iron Chef, you know, um, and I feel this strange mixture of I've truly been myself. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Like the editors for Chop came for dinner and I was like, everything's on the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my editor, I, yes, I bow to my editor. Yes. What did you take from the, all that acting? I mean, because we, I think everybody here knew you a certain way. Mm -hmm. I feel like you, now that I know you in, in real time, that you were truly always purposefully, accidentally, kismetally yourself. Yeah, I can't be anything but. Um, <laughs> yeah, good or bad. Um, I, I think the, the great thing about the acting that I did is it gave me um, a comfort on camera. So I don't even see the cameras anymore. So I can just then speak to the people that I want to speak to. I think that's why I like social media so much too, because I can connect with people that I wouldn't necessarily get a chance to connect with. That's why I like book signing so much. I can connect with the people that actually want to connect with me and that actually want to buy my book or watch my show or, or do anything that has anything to do without me, with me. So it makes me want to connect with you. It's like, if you want to be a part of my life, I want to be a part of your life. I want to know what you're, what's going on. You I know? love when you're like, hi guys, I'm sick. <laughs> And I'm gonna eat this cake. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not sick eating cake. Like, oh, this is good. <laughs> oh, I know your cake obsession. I follow you on Instagram. I need like every flower you look at is another cake. I know. I need I need counseling. I really do. <laughs> I will go into you know any store, and just all that I see. You know, when I go out for dinner or whatever else, I'm just I'm What's already your on dessert. Frosting on a cake. Well, it depends on how cream bad a day cheese, I've had. Cheese, yeah, cream it's cheese. cream cheese is my favorite <laughs> frosting. No, I do like tangy cream cheese frosting. Yeah. I do. Um, one of the recipes I really loved. So I could tell the ones that I don't know the pictures. The ones that I'm more comfortable with than other ones. Well, I found like there's a very romantic, and, and uh, I, I'm, I hesitate to use this word because I only want it to be said positively. But that kind of food that you just that that little bit of messy. Yeah. Like the breakfast Sammy. I oh, really was like, yeah. stop it. Yeah. Just stop yeah. it. And that Look at all this. Look at this. Like I'm yeah, I earmarked this sucker. Yeah. Look at that. You guys can see that in the back, can't you? <laughs> um, it was just so that I That wanted. was developed because it was Because you were starving. <laughs> <laughs> well, but because the the what the um Look biscuit sets up. I know. This is so food. exciting. You because what it? the biscuit is made out of is this um hors d'oeuvre that my parents would make that uh, from the first moment I can remember my mom and my dad cooking in the kitchen together like because my mom didn't have the strength to to mix the the sausage in with the 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 bisquick and the um and the um cheese so he would get in there with his muscles and he would get it all together and then they would both make the balls and this they the hors d'oeuvres would go so quickly and if there were any leftovers I would have them for breakfast in the morning and always want to put a little like slice of bacon and maybe a cheese but they were only this big so I said wait a minute it's made with bisquick it's a biscuit it should be a sammy and that's when I developed that I mean that just feels I mean I guess that idea of collaborate when you watch when you witness the cooking it's not and the are, love that goes into it yeah, yeah. It, but it's also being a spectator I mean like people watch you as an actress you were watching people you were a spectator to cooking I learned m almost as much just watching my parents cook and fight, FYI. <laughs> Thanksgiving, I was like under the table, like potato. Oh, well, Thanksgiving turkey. is a scary time anyway. Right? Yeah, yeah. Everything. The freaks come out at Thanksgiving. Yeah, I don't know why that is. It's the alcohol. And then the other thing I really loved deeply, which I totally felt was so chef-y, um, was this ratatouille and romaine salad with balsamic vinaigrette. That's right. So sh you cook a. It was a mistake. That's why it's chefy. 
Go ahead. It was a mistake that I was trying to um, tell my cookbook editor, Anya, who is amazing. I want to make a million books with this woman. She is amazing. She works at Time Life Oxmoor. Her whole but, family is oh, really yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> but she really, um, I, I misinterpreted a recipe that I said, I because I used to go to this place called the Moustache Cafe. And I used to get- I'm sorry, the what? The Moustache Cafe. I'm sorry, who says moustache? <laughs> because <laughs> that's- Because we're at the 92nd Street, I know, why? But this is in California. And it's on Melrose Boulevard, you know, if you know anything about, like, if you've seen on television. But I used to go there in the 80s, in the very early 80s, when I was still, uh, gosh. Ken. But this was even before I met Ed, my first husband. Ed? Ed Van Halen. Oh, Ed, Ed. <laughs> Ed. <laughs> you guys know one of the greatest guitarists of all time? Yes, he is. He that is. Ed. He is definitely, I would say, the greatest guitarist of all time. You're, so I'll just, I'll Well, clarify. we really like your other husband. I love Tommy. Isn't he Tommy great? B. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we would go to the, I would go to the Moustache Cafe, and I would order the, their salad. It wasn't a Caesar salad, but it was all romaine. Before romaine was really in. I'm talking about the early 80s. It was iceberg lettuce back then. Oh, yeah. And then they would do romaine with this amazingly tart, but yet creamy dressing and I was like all over it and then they would make ratatouille in their own little cast iron. Your mouth iron. is watering. She's like and my mouth is actually watering. I said I need to recreate because it's always there's a lot of recipes in here that I've recreated from restaurants that are gone now because my favorite restaurants just disappear. I'm like I can't be that odd but I know how difficult it is to have a restaurant be successful. Yeah. I mean, you've been doing it for almost two decades it's now. It's hard out here for a pimp. Yeah. <laughs> It really is. I'm so glad I you're recognizing. It is. It is. So tip your waiter well, please. That's all I ask tip you to do. Tip the chef. And tip the chef and the, and the wait staff. So um, when I told Anya I want to make um, this ratatouille and salad, I think I forgot to say and. So she thought ratatouille salad. And I was giving her all the ingredients. And then it went to all of the, um, the recipe developers. And I gave them all the ingredients, what I wanted in it. And they didn't separate it. They made it all one, and I thought, at first I was going, oh, no, Anya, that's wrong. And I'm like, I tasted it. I recreated it at home. I went, oh, my God, that's killer. Thanks, I'm going to put that's it in. That's exactly my vision. Right. <laughs> so my next cookbook, I'll make a classic ratatouille in a crepe and then that salad. But this is an amazeball salad. Yeah, I wanted to eat it I, because... I mean, you know how sometimes you make a few things or you're in the fridge and you're like, oh, that's, I gotta put that in there. I gotta eat that Yeah, now. I gotta get that before it goes bad. <laughs> Ratat yeah, ratatouille, I mean, it can hang out. You know, people say to me, how long does that keep? And my, you know, everybody's always like, just say like two days. And I'm like, three oh, months, two days. <laughs> Ratatouille saying, gets better. I'll keep something for 10 days and Tom will be like, are you, you not throwing that out yet? I'm like, it's still good. It's still good. You should be like, Ed would have eaten this. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's the 92nd Street Y. Tell me how you feel about your current husband. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love your husband. Uh, yes, you and Tommy V get along very well. We, we bond. We, yes, we, yes. We, we a little bit really too much bond. sometimes, I'm just saying. Okay, okay good talk. <laughs> okay, good chat. Um, <laughs> I have a, an ex husband. He's so in too. love with Alex, I can't tell you. Oh, please. Yeah. Um, I really, I, I also like, there's a lot of the California side of you in this book. Because mm -hmm. uh, I've been there since I was 11. Is that right? Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? I've lived through a few earthquakes and okay. a few fires, and yeah. I've survived. It's pretty scary out there, but we don't have hurricanes. Listen, you're going to live anywhere in the country, there you're going to have something. Natural. I mean, Mother Earth is a little pissed off right now. She's been pissed off for a while. Yeah. But you know How what? Long was November? No, I'm sorry. Shh. I, where's a good audience? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, God. Oh. She is coughing up a loogie right now. Mother I'm so, Earth. because there's so much stupidity just came out today. So, um. <laughs> So much, and the lies. Like I wish people could actually like like really grow a big nose when they lie. Can you imagine how long his nose would be? So tell me about this salad. <laughs> I never said who. It's funny that you guys seem to know who I'm talking about. Did you see her recipe for clam? 
By the way, yes. you, I gotta say one other thing. Clams, Vongolet, my favorite. I've, since I was six, I've been loving clams. On the Pennsylvania Turnpike, my daddy would take us for dinner, and we wouldn't go to, out to dinner very often because my mom, she made breakfast. She packed our lunches, and there was a hot meal when we got home, no microwave. I don't know how my mom did it, and the house was clean. She had four kids. How the heck did she do it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I had one, one kid. I had a maid come in twice a week, and it still was crazy. <laughs> so, but, so, so I would try the... At, at a very young age, try clams and fell in love with them. The steamers off the. I don't think that restaurant's there anymore. Unfortunately, it's always a restaurant that's not there anymore. It's there. I, it's there. Okay. So, <laughs> so I I always. Uh, <laughs> and then I went to. I'm going to drop a name. Ludo Lefebvre, one of my one of my favorite guys, a very good friend. He and Chrissy are good friends of mine. Great uh, chef. A, amazing chef, James Beard, like nominee, and he's got amazing restaurants in Los Angeles. Uh, Tromec, Petit Trois, and he's opening a new Petit Trois. He's got uh, Petit Familia, whatever. He's, he's really talented. And he's fancy pants. And he's Mr. Fancy Pants, unless you like spend a weekend with him at the beach, and then he's like, so not Mr. Fancy Pants. He's got all these strategic tattoos and everything, though. He's really got the look. Yeah, he does. He's a very, yeah, he's a fun, fun guy. And y y you can be very intimidated by him, but then you get to know him, and he's not intimidating at all. If you guys ever see um, The Taste, or what, what was it? The taste or something with Anthony Bourdain? Yeah, yeah. Well, he—that's the Ludo, the guy that you couldn't understand, the, the French guy. So I like he, friends, I don't understand. I know. <laughs> Sometimes I, all my friends, I don't understand. Yeah. Um, but um, so I went to his restaurant, and he had these mussels, but he had a cream sauce as opposed to just the basic butter and garlic and uh, you know some whatever greenery it might be. And I said, wait a minute. I love cream sauce, but yet I'm so on this coconut milk kick right now. Yeah. I put coconut milk in my coffee. So then I developed this recipe with sausage because I love sausage. So some sausage, some coconut milk, and a little bit of turmeric because I thought it, you know, it's turmeric's good for you. It's like an anti-inflammatory, so I'll put that in there. And uh, I developed this recipe, and I love it. I like the balance. I mean, I find a lot of these recipes, it's, it's going in, an, in a sort of indulgent direction, and then you pull it back with such... Um, Turmeric and coconut milk. <laughs> yeah, no, I think those are great, I really think they're great choices. And they, the balance, I like the sriracha bacon too. I mean, I really... Oh my God. But, so but you know, I would put that in a bag and say it's, it's jerky made yeah. from tuna. And <laughs> it tastes like jerky after yeah. a while, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you could eat it cold or you could eat it hot. It's amazing. And I, it's only four ingredients. I like that. Yeah. I, I, I've started to think that an easy meal is one where the sink is not piled high with dishes. So Agreed. this concept of a 30 minute meal that we've been kicking around for a long time, I think it's 29 minutes and 30 seconds of cooking and 30 seconds of dishes. Love that. That's my master plan. Slow cooker comes in there then. Yes, and that I really like you have um, a lot, a lot of the, um, I like the way you go through a day in your life. I love that. Thank you. And I, I like the way you begin. You drink coffee and you get really hungry. <laughs> and then you decide, am I wrong? Yeah, no. That's the vibe I get that yeah. you're like hangry, half what possibly yeah. going to be in The Shining at some point. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm, I'm going to make this. Probably a good time for me not to go to the grocery store when I'm hangry. Do you ha is that a I try not a to go to the grocery store when, I, when I'm hangry. Do people recognize you at the grocery store? They must. I mean, you're... I mean, we we just all They're always looking in my cart. You? Oh, I can't. I got to go in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> and they still recognize you. Oh, I I was telling somebody I have literally. There's a supermarket on the corner of my block. I went in. I'm shopping in the <laughs> most hideous outfit ever. I mean, ever. Just like I couldn't even believe what I was wearing. <laughs> I go in there, I go down an aisle, I'm in the junky cereal aisle, and there's nothing in the junky cereal aisle that's good. It's not like I could pretend I was getting turmeric and coconut milk. <laughs> and somebody came around the corner and said, you know, I know you because you chopped me. <laughs> oh. Only in New York, right? I yeah. was like, hey, okay, well, I'm just going to take my goji berries and leave. <laughs> So what do people no, do? No, I want to know what you made with goji berries. <laughs> no, nothing. I just fake it. I put broccoli over all my other stuff. <laughs> ah. um, so do people say to you, what are you doing? What are you cooking? Or what do they, they ask do. you they when people see you? They come to me more you? often than not now, asking me for a good recipe or asking me, you know, uh, it's 
like I'm in heaven, that I get to like really speak knowledgeably for me anyway, about a dish that I'm excited about and an ingredient I'm excited about. Nobody comes up and asks you for like, oh, well, how would you act in this? And how would you do in this you know, situation if you were in a movie or a TV show or on play? I'm like, no, but they do wanna come up to you and ask you about a recipe or an ingredient. And it connects people. Food is love, no doubt about it. I, I agree. I think that it's a community that accepts you when they believe in your authenticity and in your expertise. So I'm so impressed. I think you really, you know, you're sort of that girl next door that we feel we know. You're, you're a neighbor, you're I've been around a long time. Um, okay. <laughs> but long now time. we're sort of getting another look at what you, like your humanity and what you eat and what you do with your time and how your day goes. I mean, this is a real look into your day. If you want to get to know me, it's be in a kitchen with me, read my book, my cookbook. It, that is me. This is who I am. This is the heart of me. And this is where I find my joy. Your husband said there's only one cook in the house. Do you let him cook it all? Yeah. How's that I going? I stole a recipe from him actually and put it in the book. Right, I remember. The espresso, the espresso steak, the, the uh, ribeye. He was developing this. I mean, well, he was developing it. it. No, I'm always developing stuff in my mind. But he was like, oh, I think I'll do a little bit of this. And honey, do you have any of that extra espresso left, you know, instant espresso left over? Uh, yeah. Uh, any more of that chipotle or whatever spice? And he, yeah. And he, so he's playing with the steak. I'm like, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Then he lets it rest for 30 minutes. And it turns to this, like, glaze over the steak. And then he heats up the cast iron in the oven and then sears that glaze onto the ribeye and then throws it back in the oven to let it finish off cooking. Date night. Um, yeah, date night. And this is only a, like half a glass in and I'm like, dude, you don't have to go any further. You're mine tonight. <laughs> this was the most amazing steak and I said, by the way, honey, it, stealing it, putting it in my book. I'm making a whole rack of this when I get home. <laughs> Uh, my husband came up with this recipe, and if I hadn't already married him, it would have been love at first bite. Right. Come on. He Come has been on. forgiven a lot through that steak. What ha <laughs> Really? So we've done some healing and some arguing. Too, <laughs> Are we? you kidding? It's a 13-year relationship. Yeah, we've never argued. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> um, I feel like this is not the only book you'll write, too. Do I you hope feel not. like you want to write more? I've got so many recipes inside my head on my phone I'm constantly I was just writing a recipe today on my phone because I was inspired by something or other from some restaurant I'd been to and I thought well I, oh I was writing a drink recipe last night because I happened to have some leftover clementine vodka I wait hmm clementine vodka but if I use real vodka and really got the clementines and the cuties and really squeeze those if I put a little bit so I'm well, cranberry juice oh I'm not gonna tell you right now I'm moving from the next book I like, um, <laughs> so, so what you eat, what you experience really informs what goes into your books and your show. It does. And I, I actually am so envious of you because you can get more clarity when you look a, at, a, at a rose bush or something and you'll say, I'm in the mood for, and you'll bring out the colors of whatever that food is. Like uh, your Instagram feed is amazing. Oh. And it is. And I get inspired, but I'm not as like clear about what I'm inspired about. When I see something, I'll think, hmm, I want a steak because I saw a cow, you know? <laughs> and you're like, I want to do this foie gras with this because I saw this beautiful flower in the lake at the park. I'm like, oh God, okay. But it's like, how do you do that? Yeah, I don't know. That sounded pretty chefy to me, Valerie. <laughs> Seeing a cow and wanting a steak. I mean, I took my daughter to feed ducks, and I was like. <laughs> Let me just grab this little sucker. My daughter's 10. She's like, Mommy, the ducks are so cute. Look. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> Literally like, yeah. you know, like in the cartoon. When in my dining room, I have, one to the, I have nine photos of cows, 12 by, 24 by 24. I have these paintings of these cows by this artist because I just... I want it. I love cows. I'm sorry that I'm eating you, but I appreciate you, appreciate you every time I take a bite. So you sit at your dining room table eating steak and looking, looking at a cow. Yeah. 
I like it. I'm a little sick that way. No, that sound. <laughs> I mean, I just think you you really are like a chef spirit animal. I, I think. Although I must say, I made a porchetta. She's sitting up again. Oh, we're talking about Por food. So you say porchetta like or porchetta? I say porchetta. Okay, I say porchetta too, but some people are like adamant that it's porchetta. Well, I mean, if Giada De Laurentiis were here, we'd have to really break <laughs> it down. I would have to listen to her and see what she said. I just turned to her for the, uh, the yeah. Italian pronunciation. Right, so I, yeah. But I made it the other day, and um, there was too many nipples. It's a, it's a pork belly, the porchetta is made from a pork belly. And you wanna get that skin, and you need to um, score it to get that nice, crispy, like, you know, pork skin out of it, like you like uh, chicharrones. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but they're a little bit thicker and a little bit more fat to, to them. And I'm scoring it, and I run across a nipple. And I go, OK, I'm a vegetarian. That's it. I'm done. Well, I ate it. Should... I ate it. I'm sorry. I ate it. Maybe you should hang some pictures of pigs. Oh, I no? know. Because no? they're really smart. Yeah. So I have a hard time with that. But I still doesn't stop me from eating bacon in the morning. So there you go. I'm just a hypocrite. I like it. I don't think if you are you a hypocrite if you admit it. So you love a pig and you still that. eat it? Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm not going to be a vegetarian. I mean, I my friend has a really great cat, like a Maine Coon, and it's like forty pounds or whatever. And this cat is gorgeous. And I'm. Is this Nacho Flay? It's Nacho. <laughs> and I'm. I've never met Nacho, and I'm very jealous. I'm petting the cat, and I'm like realizing that I'm slowly starting to rub it like it's a turkey. <laughs> And I said, I'm, give me some soft butter. And I'm like, <laughs> so I am not going to be, is the veg, I'm, I love produce and, and vegetables. Uh, yes, the greener the better. But, um, and I love the use of vegetables. I feel like you really. I love roasting them. Like I love roasting radishes because it, it you know how um, roasting usually intensifies the flavor of a lot of vegetables? Yeah. Well, I feel like when you roast a radish, it kind of, intensifies the flavor but yet mellows out that that bite that peppery bite that radish can have yeah and it just makes it that much more delicious uh, I, so I love I love radishes though any, I any I think that's a really great description I think as the water comes out of them so does that it's almost like that bitter edge that makes us not love eating them either mm. I want a radish that's raw that you burn your mouth off eating right with the little drive-by and butter yeah I pruned <laughs> <laughs> right, that is a prune moment. Yeah. Or I want it roasted. Yeah. So, what is your favorite vegetable? Uh, I was gonna say broccoli, but I really I do like a good radish. If I could only choose one veggie for the rest of my life, I hesitate to say kale, but it's so good for you. Oh my God, you can't pick kale. <laughs> How about if it's a lacinato kale? All right, lacinato, <laughs> or the Californian in you. But I also love you love avocado. I love avocados, good fat. But that's not really, it's fruit, right? It's fruit, right, so is a tomato. I don't want to get a lot of emails like, uh, dear Miss Cornicelli. <laughs> don't, I know. I is hate to break it to you. <laughs> so you've done this, you've done your cooking show, do you get nervous when you're, when you go, when you're, All the I time? Mean, you're on food, you know, you're on a cooking channel now. Do you feel like a different set of eyes is on you, looking to you for a different... Oh, the judgment, yeah, is, is super loud sometimes. And I feel like um, I'm happy to let people judge me and just let my, my um, cooking do the talking because I think I'm a really good cook. And it, it took a lot... I mean, even as I say that, my brain is going, oh, naughty, naughty, how dare you say something nice about yourself? But I am a really, really good cook. And I want to share that with people. And I want to share the knowledge that I have and make it so that other people can find the great cook in themselves. Because I think a lot of you guys are probably better chefs, better cooks than you think you are. And you get in the kitchen and you think, well, I could never, you know, but you can. You can. I'm just lucky enough that I have experience on television that I can take my other love, which is cooking, and, and bring it to everybody. I do. I mean, I was on your cooking show, and you were, I came on and you said, oh, I, I you know, I'm, you were so humble. Well, I have Alex Cornicelli on the show. I mean, I know, I mean, I know what this woman can do. So, of course, I'm like, I'm just going to make some sausage and peppers and some kind of and everything, and then you, 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 you might like them. I love the way that we're on the set of her show, but it's so real. I mean, the fridge has what you're cooking yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. The notes on the fridge are real. Mm -hmm. 
you have those um, cannoli shell jitters. Yeah. Oh, you're making those yeah. cannolis. Yeah. And I like that there are a couple of recipes, I think, like cannolis, that they, the, the result is something that we're so familiar with. That's part of Italian Americana. Right. But it's, it's something people don't make at home. Right, because it takes a slightly little more bit of effort, but it's so worth it when you do it. I, I mean, making a cannoli shell isn't anywhere near as difficult as you might think. It's just, you know, who wants to bring out the big, you know, Dutch oven and put the oil in and then do them deep frying with the thermometer. But, you know, once you do and you make enough cannoli shells, you can put them away. You can freeze them. Just don't stuff them. Only stuff them right before you're about to eat them. It's a very important... <laughs> But that's something my husband taught me. Don't stuff the can. It'll just make the shell all like. Mm. That's a descriptor. It is. It's a descriptor. <laughs> and then you know, if you stuff them, then you have to eat them. Unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. That's where you need a lot of friends. Um, <laughs> or not. Or not. Yeah. Really, a good movie. Or you need a really excuses. good sad movie that you're crying and you know, I could only. Yeah. <laughs> so you do that too? No. Why would you think that? Of course I don't do that. I've so, not seen Notting Hill a million times. I love that. <laughs> so you originally pitched a travel show with your husband. I did. I went to Food Network, I want to say four or five years ago, and I said, I want to do this show. I want to um, go all around Italy and find my roots and my husband's roots. And we go all the way from northern Italy to, you know, in San Remo and Lanza Torinese, all the way down to Sicily in Castel Valtrano, where, where his grandmother's from. And I said, we could do some amazing shows there. And I could write a book at the same time. And they're like, yeah, that sounds very interesting. No, thank you. But do you want to be on in the mornings and, and cook, you know, do a regular 30 minute show? I'm like, okay. You know, and I'm still trying to sell that show to Food Network, but you know, I'm still trying to show, sell a show between me and Alex. Have you guys ever seen um, um, the two fat ladies? <laughs> right? Were they freaking brilliant? I mean, they would start the show and they would like have a cocktail and they'd talk about where they're going and then they would go cook for a ton of people. I love it. And then, and then they would like, and you love cars and antique cars. I love cars. My dad was a G, I'm a GM brat. We would have so much fun getting a different car for every show, and then we'd drink cocktails and and get on the road and, and talk about the next people we're going to cook for. Well, who wouldn't? We could cook for the 92nd Street Y. <laughs> you know, it could be one of the shows. It'd be so much fun. We could go two Italian ladies. I, yes, let's get rid of fat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's, no, I don't like that one either. But they were funny about it. They were. So hysterical. kooky. Hysterical. She'd be like chain smoking with a casserole waiting for the bus. <laughs> That's horrible. And I'm like, what are that would you be like, doing? That would that... be like me holding one of my cats while I'm stirring the stew. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll bring Nacho over. We'll see right. what will happen. So if you... But wait a minute. Wouldn't that be a great show? <laughs> me and Alex on the road cooking for people? I anyway, there's that. nobody from Food Network here, so it doesn't matter. I can't work like this. I've, I've, I've got my people clapping. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so who's a dream guest for you to have on your show? You were. Oh, that's sweet. It's Nobody. true. No, that, thank it's you. It's true. I, I tell you, they, they said, look, we, you know, we need you to go all the way to California to do this one show. It's going to take a couple hours. That's it. And I just said, I'm, I'm on the plane. <laughs> I'm so on that plane. And it was so worth it to thank experience you. that with you. So who else is a dream guest? I get, I get too nervous. I would rather do the show with you or people that I'm used to cooking with. Yeah. Then and I would rather do it by myself and just show you the recipes that I love and why I love them and why I develop them and how tasty they are. Then, and then have to do a lot, of the, a lot of the show, people's favorite part is, is seeing the family come over and the friends come over. Yeah. But that's the hardest part of the show for me. Because the easiest part is the cooking, and actually the more easier part is when I do the um, silent flashbacks, and all I get to do is cook. I don't have to talk. I just put the ingredients in and close up, and I do what I'm supposed to do, and I mix what I'm supposed to mix, and I roll out what I'm supposed to roll out, and I get to cook. I don't have to talk. I hate talking. <laughs> you would never know that. I'm so glad we're in conversation <laughs> right now. But my, I mean, I, believe it or not, I'm an introvert, and I just, my happiest place is just cuddled up with my cats or rolling out a pie dough and making a pie all by myself. So it's, it's, a, it's a big step for me to do this in front of people, and I 
can't even begin to say how grateful I am that people have accepted me in this arena. I mean, it's really breathtakingly like, what? That, that I get to do this now at 57. It's crazy. So would you call this the best chapter of your life so far? Absolutely. I had to. Absolutely. I had to Absolutely. use journey or chapter at some <laughs> point. It's not an interview. If you it is the say. best chapter, I, I, except for that little tiny chapter in 1991 when I gave birth to Wolfie. This is the best chapter of my life. I was next going to ask you about Wolfie. Has he been on the show? <laughs> yes, you've seen the show. Yeah, he's been on the show uh, kicking and screaming. He hates to come on the show. Why? Because he doesn't like being on camera, and he like he'll stand on stage in front of twenty thousand people, but he doesn't want to be on camera. I don't I? Yeah, I don't because I hate being on camera too. <laughs> but yeah, I was you just do it. Say I love how you just describe how annoying it is, to, and, right. and then and that's saying you. It's exactly yeah. you. Yeah. Well, it's, I annoy myself too. Okay, so you just sit at home like oh, I'm so annoyed. You were so annoyed. <laughs> but you, you, I mean, clearly your son has been such a magical part. Yes. Just like your daughter, oh, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, could the you best. imagine your life without her? Best recipe I ever cooked up. <laughs> a rough one. <laughs> yeah. Ups and downs like... and some, you know, burnt, burnt pieces and some undone pieces, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, my daughter came out and kind of looked at me and my ex-husband like, <laughs> I swear she's She looks already... at everybody like that, but yeah. I love her. Yeah, no, she's a she's little, amazing. She's a little juicy Oh, one. somebody's trying to come in. Hello. Hello. Oh, questions. I love it. Oh, questions from the audience. Aha. Bonnie wants to know, Valerie, I love your show and I love to cook. How do you create wonderful meals without tasting it at every step to make sure it tastes good? Thank you, heart Bonnie. Oh, where are you, Bonnie? Hi, Bonnie. Um, I don't, I don't not taste it. I taste it every step of the way, <laughs> especially when I'm developing the recipe. So, um, I think the only way to know that your recipe is going to turn out is by tasting it every step of the way. So you can add a little bit of this and add a little bit of that. You know, except when it's baking, then you got to be careful because it's science when it comes to that. But yeah, tasting is what it's all about. Yeah, always I, taste your food. Don't you say that on Chopped? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm gonna add smelling. It's amazing to me now. I've been a judge on Chopped for almost 10 years, so I've eaten a lot of gummy worms. <laughs> And toilet paper and other things. Um, I always joke that I want to just them just to put like a, a hawk, like a live hawk, and <laughs> oh, no! open the basket and let it fly around. <laughs> I mean, I just give up. I don't know what they're gonna do next. Um, I do. Is there anything you won't eat? No, there's stuff that I'd rather not eat. Most of the things that I won't eat are because I've cooked them so much. Bread pudding in restaurants. Yes, bread pudding is forever dead to me <laughs> because of chopped. That's too bad because it's so good. I know, but anything's in the basket. They're like, there's a book in the basket. They're like, I know, I'll cut it up and make bread pudding. So <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> right? There's like a side of beef. They're like, bread pudding, of course. <laughs> So I can't, never again. I hear you. Um, so I won't have you over for bread pudding. Yeah, no, no. Let's let's take a pass. I'll take a smoothie over bread pudding. <laughs> okay. You get my drift. Um, but yeah, I think tasting totally and smelling and smelling and yeah. yeah. Um, I, but you I, can't cook without it, Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie, wherever you are, for God's sake, <laughs> taste your food. Let's do this together, Bonnie. <laughs> What's a good starting point for a creating a new recipe? Inspiration. Um, a good starting point is taking whatever may be in season and going, what do I want to do with this that's something I haven't done with it yet? It could be anything from a tomato to, um, uh, God, I don't know, a strawberry. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Clementine vodka, <laughs> you know, making a new drink out of it. Mm -hmm. But finding, a, finding an ingredient, and that's the first step. I think that's also, you must take inspiration having lived in California so long. There's such we a bounty. We are very lucky with the produce out there. Such a bounty. And a lot of things stay in season a lot longer than they normally would, except watermelon. Drives me crazy. What Watermelon's one of my minutes? favorite fruits besides lemon. And maybe August you're lucky if it's good. And then when you see watermelons in October, you're like, oh, hell no. I don't, what are you trying to pull over on me? 
There's no way this watermelon is sweet. Are you like a green market terrorist? Listen to you. <laughs> She's like, don't you try to sell me that watermelon. It's September. <laughs> Only with watermelon, actually. Okay. Yeah. I like that. So certain ingredients have their sacred place yes. in your heart. Yeah, and I, because I know when watermelon goes out of season, the NFL is coming into season. So when I'm depressed about watermelon going out of season, oh, I get to watch football. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could fill a watermelon with clementine vodka and watch football. Uh, well, then there you go. It doesn't matter how sweet it was or wasn't. <laughs> I like, uh, this is an interesting total departure. Having been on a sitcom in the 70s and 80s, then much later on in the 90s, when did you, what did you find most different about production? from one to the other. Oh, are you but talking about kind of from one day at a time to hot in Cleveland? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, not 90s, 2000s. The uh, aughts. 2010s, the I should say. Where, who Eddie. Eddie, where are you? For Eddie. God's sake, we oh, hi, Eddie. Um, a, you know, very different and very similar. Um, I was super lucky that I worked with people that were very nurturing with one day at a time, from Norman Lear to Bonnie Franklin to Pat Harrington. Um, and I became best friends with Mackenzie Phillips. We're still friends to this day. Um, and then that was a four camera show in front of a live audience. And then I did a few movies through that and then a um, few shows that were one camera shows. And then to do Hot in Cleveland, again, was a four camera in front of a live audience. So that muscle, and you know what it's like to be in front of a live audience. Yeah. It is exhilarating. It, the, the audience is um, another member of the show. They're, they're another cast member. They're another character because you can feel them with you. The energy is amazing. You can feel when they know your character so well that when, when one character gives a line, they're waiting for the other character to react to it. And that's when you know you have a hit on your hands. And I felt that with both One Day at a Time and Hot in Cleveland. And Hot in Cleveland was like... I still can't believe that they canceled us. I thought, I thought, oh my God, TV Land, you're so stupid. <laughs> I mean, why would you cancel us for it? Because you want to get a younger audience. I mean, I, I sound so angry. I don't mean to be angry. I'm just, I'm disappointed because we had a good couple more years in us. And Betty Great White show. is 90 freaking five right now. Take advantage of that God blessed woman. I agree. Yeah. It was a great show, great cast. Oh, it was an amazing cast. I mean, Wendy Malick and, and Jane Leaves and Betty White, I mean, f amazing cast. And all of us had the same ego. We were like, I don't want to, you want to say this line? Because I don't care. I mean, it wasn't about like how much airtime you got. It was just about what's going to make the show better. And the writers were amazing. And TV Land is still stupid. Good talk. <laughs> so you broke. I'm not opinionated at all. No, no, I'm glad. I feel we we're both very dull. <laughs> so you broke up with TV Land and you... and you They broke up with me. You, I'm just saying. It was on your terms. You broke up with them. No, they broke up with me. You broke up with I them. I would have you stayed broke with, with TV with Land. Them. <laughs> and now you're dating Food Network and it's going but see, great. Food Network is supposed to be my summertime fling. Oh. And I was gonna do I was gonna do my show every summer when I finished with Hot in Cleveland. And then TV Land broke up with me, but then... Food Network became my husband. You've had a lot of husbands, haven't you? In your <laughs> TV land, Ed, Food Network. A lot Network. of relationships in my life. I like it. But isn't it weird how when you're with a network or like with my publishing company, um, Time and Oxmoor, you become a family because you work really closely together and you become a family. And I really feel like I'm a part of the Food Network family now. And it is like, thank you. But I, do, please don't break up with me. <laughs> I don't think they no, are. Am I begging? That's not good. No, no, it's okay. You're doing great. Uh, <laughs> I'll be one of those stalker girlfriends. This is my favorite question. Uh oh. So when's the third cookbook coming out? And I ask my publisher over there, my editor. <laughs> this feels we'll see. If you guys buy enough of these, I can do a third one. I think it's great. <laughs> I like these questions a lot. Um, what is your favorite food memory of your nona? P.S. Love your show, oh. Christine Marshall. Wherever you are, Christine, we dig you. I have a few, thank you, Christine. I have a few absolutely un incredible food memories of my noni. Um, I'll go with the first one that I was able to recreate at a restaurant in Los Angeles. My, uh, my noni would make this capelletti, and I would watch her make it, and I was finally able to recreate it uh, long after she had already passed away. Um, 
because my Aunt Adeline gave me the recipe, but um, she would make the capoletti, and while they were still fresh, she wouldn't even put them in the freezer, she would plop them in this beautiful golden chicken broth, and then just hand me the bowl right there, and then, then just scrape a little Parmesan right over it. And it was the most, my mouth is watering again. <laughs> It was the most amazing bowl of soup I'd ever had in my entire life. I'm six years old. But still, to this day, I, you put a capoletti and brodo in front of me, and I'm dying. So I went to Moza in Los Angeles, which is Nancy Silverton. That little uh, joint. Yeah, that little joint. With your husband, Ed. But, <laughs> no, I this, see, was, no, this no, was Tom. I mean to say I like the way you... Uh, you undersell things. Moza is pretty much it's amazing. The it's greatest amazing. restaurant it's in Nancy Los Angeles. It's Nancy Silverton and Mari Batali and the um, um, uh, Bastianich family. Bastianich. I, ba Bastianich, thank you. My Italian sucks. Um, <laughs> so uh, I went there and I had the soup and I cried, literally cried, sitting at the table, going, "Noni, my noni is right here, right now, with me." I was in that basement kitchen. I was watching her form the capolettis. I was watching her ladle it out for me in a restaurant that I'd never been in before, and I cried that is the power of food. It can bring you back to a memory, to a, um, a beautiful memory in your life where you feel love and where you feel connection with another human being. And she would also make this crescia that I now found out that in certain parts of Italy, a crescia is a, either Easter bread or what my grandmother would make is this beautiful pizza dough or her bread dough. I love how your mouth's watering. Uh, it is. And, and then she would just slice very thinly these... Um, uh, onions all over it and then sprinkle it with a, just a little bit of garlic and just a, the slightest bit of salt and then spray it with olive oil and then put that in the oven and it was the best piece of bread I've ever had. So I, yeah, I have some memories with Noni. <laughs> My mouth is watering still. Any other inspirations in the kitchen? So your mother too, right? Oh, my mom. Like I was saying earlier, she would... Um, she would make breakfast for us while she was also packing our lunches, and then by the time we got home from school, there was a warm dinner in the oven. She would make a mean roasted chicken like you could not believe, which I've still not developed because I don't feel like I've actually gotten to my mom's roasted chicken yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, will, I will go out and get a chicken at Gelson's. Uh, Gelson's, that's California, like a, a local market where they're mm -hmm. roasting a chicken over the spit. And I'll buy that because I think I can't, I give up. I cannot recreate my mom's chicken yet. Yeah, it's so simple. It is, but there's a gift. There's like either it's the temperature or it's the, the heat of your oven. Every oven is different. Mm -hmm. And I, I haven't calibrated my oven, so I, I don't know. I don't know what is, is stopping me. Maybe it's that I feel like I'm not worthy of recreating her dish. I don't know what it is. I, I'd like to say maybe that some memories, sometimes I don't want to make something because I just like the way I think of it, and I like to be given it to eat as opposed to making it to eat. I don't know if you do, but I've spent my entire adult life doing nothing but cooking. And sometimes there are things I don't want to cook because mm. I want the, to preserve the experience of enjoying them when I eat them. Yeah, I hear you. You feel any and of that? And if you put, yes, I think you're absolutely right. And if you have to put so much work into it, sometimes it, like Thanksgiving Day, I never enjoy the meal. Yeah, you eat a bag of Doritos in I'm, the back. I never enjoy the meal. I'm so busy cooking and basting and, and baking and doing everything. I'm not hungry by the time the, the meal, I'm like, I'll take a few bites. I'm like, oh, I'm done. You know, because I the smell, everything, it's, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by it. So Thanksgiving is probably the, the one day of the year that I really just don't eat. But you really, I mean, it sounds like you start from the beginning and you just put out this whole spread. And then what do you eat, really? Because does someone bring a pie from, like, the local supermarket and mm -hmm. pretend they baked it and you eat a wedge of that? Or mm -hmm. what are we talking about? I here? mean, sometimes, sure. I mean, uh, this year, I'm awfully lucky because I'm going to drop a name now. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Ludo Lefebvre is coming over with his family. Oh, my. So That's a, a lot of chef. stress. It, no, not anymore. You're over it. I'm over Ludo. I mean, not over Ludo. I mean, I love him, and he's an amazing chef, and I love going to his restaurants. And, but it's so much fun to cook with him because he gives me a hard time. Like, I think we would, like, yeah. when, we have a, when we're in the kitchen cooking, you give me a hard time, I give you a hard time. Totally. Because that's what, that's what chefs do, right, chef? It's, a, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's that camaraderie, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So he's tasting my stuff, and I, I once made salsa for him. Uh-oh. And um, I like it real... Um, Brothy, like a lot, a lot of the tomato that just gets in there, I like that to 
seep in with the jalapeno and all the stuff that's in there and the lime that I put in there. And I saw him take my, my salsa and drain it. I'm like, ah! <laughs> So it really is subjective. I mean, an amazing French chef doesn't want that much lime broth in his so salsa, French. but I like it that way. It's more he is. I can't believe you're relaxed cooking around him. I am now. Honestly, I wasn't you, the first time. You really set the bar high. I mean, you're like, Escafia is coming over. We're just going to have toast. <laughs> I still get nervous. You do. With some people, sure. Because most of the time when I'm cooking for somebody that I admire, I mess up. I'm going to say 99% of the time. In what way? Um, I'll over season or under season or I'll burn it or it, and it's a running joke with Wolfie. He's like, mom, you're not going to make popcorn, are you? Because you're going to burn it. <laughs> and so now I have perfected popcorn to a point where I do not burn it because he, he's, that's his joke with me. So I'm not come over for popcorn. It's really good. It has been burned. Does he cook anything for you? He actually once cooked me, um, an egg. Baked, no, baked chicken with some steamed broccoli. I, it was so freaking cute. It was so cute. And he was so proud of himself in his new condo. And I was just like, I couldn't say anything. It was just What like, did you want to say? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Because Wolfie made it for me, so of course it was like, you know, Michelin starred, mm. right? Mm. Mm, the truth comes out about Wolfie. <laughs> He's not a great chef, but he can play a mean guitar, piano, bass, and drums. He's found his calling. He has found his calling. He got his dad's gifts, not mine. Are you musical? <laughs> Do you play any instruments? <laughs> the harp? I sing in the shower. <laughs> That's what, I, that's what I do. I sing in the shower, and I am Barbara Streisand in the shower until I hear myself. I'm like, ooh, that's not good. No? No. You're going to stick to the cannolis. I'm going to stick to the cannolis. All right. I yeah. like that. So we've got your son. We have your Nona. We have your mom. Any other culinary inspirations? Who would you like to cook for if you could cook for someone? Anyone. I'm clutching your book like it's my, <laughs> my whoopee. <laughs> Um, too much stress. Too much stress. Too much pressure. Too much presser. Pr pressure. <laughs> Have we started drinking yet? <laughs> yeah, I no, know. No, it's too much pressure. I, um, I, I get too, like, I'm afraid to cook for you. I would rather cook with you than for you. Yeah, because then we could share the blame. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. If someone makes you nervous, invite them over and make them make stuff. Yes. And then people say, well, this is kind of, this needs salt, and you say, Ludo made it. <laughs> right. I mean, I'd love to cook with everybody, with, not for, with everybody on the Food Network. All mm -hmm. those chefs. I mean, Ina and uh, Bobby and Giada and you and, you know, Ted and er everybody. GZ. Ina. Ina. I just want to be Ina. I oh. want to go home. I mean, I just, I want to pick those tulips. I want Jeffrey to come home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's like that painter, Bob Ross, when he would say, like, yes, it's snow so, on the cedars, yes. I'm just going to put a little snow. It's so soothing. Like, I we know. all want Ina's life, don't we? Yeah. She must have something wrong with her. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Zero. Ina's perfect. She does not go home and say, you know, no. does it look OK? No. Nothing. Nothing. She's got that bottle of vanilla that's like $8,000. Right. The good stuff. She just has the it all. The good stuff. Yeah, she's, the, she's that girl that's got everything. I know. And I like when she's like, and you're going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> and and like, she's right. I'm like, no, I'm not. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Right. Right? I want to go to Oklahoma and cook with the Pioneer Woman. How much fun would that be? I want to go to Osage County. I want to go to the Pioneer Mercantile. I mean, that looks like a heaven to me. I used to live, live in Oklahoma City, so that would be like right around, you know, I feel at home there. I would. Oh, totally. I can, I can ride a horse. I can. I've done it. I love when she's like, oh, here are the eight dogs, five children, 20 family members. She's like, piece of cake. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I have one child in an apartment. I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm like, shh, let's watch the Pioneer one. Yes. Everything's going to be She's fine. She's so soothing. She makes it look so easy. Yeah. I do have to say, though, I do feel like I want to pull up in a van at Ina's house and just sit at the, you know, just with a hockey mask and sit down at the table. 
and be like, give me that roast chicken and those biscuits right now. <laughs> and see, so I, mean? I would go up and knock on the door. I say, can I please have? <laughs> Yeah. You, go, you show up in the hockey mask and I'll go ask. <laughs> Great. Yeah, no, it's just something. You know when she opens the door and she's like, look at this garden, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And her giggle. I yeah. love her giggle. She's got a lot of mischief in her. Yeah. But I, I do, I mean, I do watch your show. I enjoy watching you. I think you, you make me feel, I mean, I look at cooking shows. I'm, I've been doing nothing but cooking, so... I, I'm someone who needs to be disarmed first, and then I can relax and enjoy. And I, I personally, as a viewer, I watch Food Network a lot. Too. And I think I need to believe you. I need to, I need to feel it. And right. I've, I think that goes to the tasting question and the recipes you choose and the way you are in your kitchen. I think you're, you just have that that nervous humility mixed with truth. And it's just, it rings true. I mean, I go into the kitchen, and even after all these years, I mean, I um, take the ingredients and I put them out and I just say, you know. Speak to me. Yeah, or, you know, I, I, I mean, people say, do you burn yourself, do you cut yourself? I still do. Oh my God, my pinky. Happened. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have like a knot, a couple fingers that just will never be round. <laughs> I'm not gonna be a hand model. Not me either. No, those days are over. My nails are just growing back, and my cuts from, I just did two months of my show, and I, my, it just destroys your hands. Now, how does Giada keep those beautiful hands, by the way? I have, she's amazing, too. She literally rides in on a magic carpet and is like, She does. Dang, she does. Dang. Girl never sweats. She never, she's always, every time I've perfect. seen her, anything, she's always looks perfect. Right. Ugh. I go out for lunch. She, I'd hate her, but she's so sweet, I can't. Yeah, no. Yeah, she's too kind. She eats, you know, she's got mozzarella, she's got yeah. cake, cookies. She eats, trust me, she eats. And I watch, like, the food going down, and I'm like, I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> You're eating. Yeah. Right? What happened? I don't get it. No. <laughs> you know when the fine print on commercials, it says, results can vary. <laughs> But I believe her too, and especially totally. if you go to her restaurant, she has a sweet tooth like nobody's business. Oh, so she eats, but she she really gets into cake. And if you give her cake that's not good, it's 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 a forget big, about it. It's a big problem. Okay, I'll never make her cake. I'll never make her cake. But you go to her restaurant, you eat the whole meal, and then dessert is literally like the Queen of England comes out with the tray of cakes, <laughs> and you just feel how she eats is in the sensibility of her restaurant. I really. I read this book, and you know, I got this book. Um, I think a week or two ago, and I, I just looked at the cover, and I thought, there she is, She's so <laughs> filled with mischief and spaghetti. Mm, yep. Yeah. And slowly, I kind of flipped through the book. First, I read about your story, and because I think every recipe does have a story. You really are, as we say, the romance copy. The paragraph at the top, you see, the baby's hungry too. <laughs> the romance copy, as we say, the seduction to the recipe. I mean, I was reading those as much as I was reading, you know, this is like a really good string of pearls. I put my heart into that, so thank you, because it's, it means a lot to me. This book is, is my, uh, my little baby, and I'm very, very proud of it. I love that. So what's next? <laughs> What's next on your journey? <laughs> um, I just finished uh, the eighth season of Valerie's Home Cooking. Hello. And that would be going through. <laughs> it's very different, though, on cable. Like, I've been doing this for almost three years, my show, but yet we're, we just finished filming the eighth season. So it's kind of it's odd the way that goes. And the eighth season will take us to probably June of next year. Um, I would love to be back um, for more seasons. I would love to do a show with you. Yeah, I know. We've got to do something. I know. We really we have do. to. Yeah, yeah. I want to go to Tuscany again. I haven't been to Italy in way too long, and I want to go to Tuscany, and there's a, a program that uh, is called Tuscan Women Cook, and cook with the women that make the pasta and make everything, because I missed out with my grandma. I just watched her, but now I'm at an age where I can actually do it with them. So since my grandma can't be alive, I want to go cook with the uh, Tuscan women. Is that, I mean, keeping someone who isn't alive anymore alive through food? Absolutely. Important. Yeah, very important. 
my noni's alive. And when I was writing this book, I, I was thinking about my noni and going through pictures and her recipes and, and going through my mom's recipes and stealing my mom's recipes. You know, it, 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 it connected me to the women that I love and that I uh, learned from. I mean, I learned that I was, um, I'm a long line of, of, of cooks. My great grandmother was a chef in, in San Remo for the um, summer months, met her husband there, got pregnant, didn't get married. Um, and then married him after. Oh, she was a, like in 19 whatever, oh something. She was a, a tart. A she was a tart. <laughs> she was a tart. Like I brought it back to food. Yes, she was a tart. <laughs> and then she, st she started making her own homemade gelato when her mother died and uh, made enough gelato so she could make money to get on a, a boat um, a week after the Lusitania sunk. So she, that, she was a very brave woman, got on with her two kids, a widow, and then. Um, went to America, married another man, a coal miner, and then he tried to kill her. <laughs> and she started, yeah, it's just very strong women, it, but she pretended she was dead when he shot at her, and then he went in the other room and killed himself. So I, it's horrible. Results can vary. It's <laughs> results can vary. But what I, but she is a, a one in uh, many of very, very brave, strong women in uh, my, um, in my background. And then I go to my mother's side and it's even crazier. We go all the way back to Henry, the, I mean, um, William the Conqueror. So all the way back to, you know, the house. And so I, I don't know. I have a lot of, a lot of people to compete with in my family. <laughs> Do you think Ina has a personal history like this? <laughs> Everybody is perfect. They all have bottles of vanilla and tulips. Yeah. My vanilla has probably gone bad because I buy too many bottles and then I open too many of them, so I, I have to I throw some out. <laughs> I love the smell of vanilla. Me, I always overpour. Always. Never use a teaspoon. I always overpour. It's so, it just adds Yummy. such unbelievable flavor. Yeah, and while you overpour, you can take a little and go like this. I agree. <laughs> On all the little. All the little pulse points. Honey, I'm home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I read that vanilla was originally made to flavor chocolate and not to be its own flavor. And I that realize that sometimes I eat a piece of chocolate and I can taste the vanilla in there and it's just so juicy, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, it, it rounds that flavor out. I agree. I'm getting, I've, uh, this conversation has actually made me hungry, not for bread pudding, but it has made me hungry for many things. So I guess I just want to know, um, you must have some guilty pleasures. I always want to know what people's guilty pleasures are. And it can't be like a milfoy that you ate on a terrace 10 years ago when the raspberries were perfect. It has to be who, kind of- Who do you think you're talking no, to? No, I want to know about your <laughs> junkie spirit animal. I do, because I love an In-N-Out burger like a double-double animal with no fries, because they're fries, they need to work on that. Okay, and, and it, I actually love In-N-Out fries. You do. But you have to eat them when they're super duper hot. Once they go start, like a little warm to cold, forget about it. Nah, throw them away. But, and, but I like the bread on an In-N-Out burger, that crispy edge. Oh, yeah. oh that's, that's the best part, best part. And I don't get a double-double, I just get a single because I want that bread. Hmm. And there's one right down the hill from us and it's so hard to drive by it, I can't even begin to the tell smell. you. The smell. Oh, yeah, you smell it. For, but as, if I see a nice long line, I'm like, good, can't go. <laughs> it keeps what, me like, from going. There's a line all the way out all the time. What's long, like 100 cars? Because for uh, when, me, I'd be like, there's only 80 cars I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the line goes all the way through the parking lot and out onto Ventura Boulevard, I'm not going to go in. Not that you're looking every time. Every time. Every time you no, look. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Yeah. So that's your, I mean, I agree. Yeah, that's it, so good. Or, or um, a bit of honey bar. A bit of honey. bit of honey. Remember those? See a little sweetness. Yeah, I like a but Charleston I actually, ooh, I chew. I like those. Zh, 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 zh. So you guys like bit of honey? Remember those, right? The good old-fashioned candy bars. I like a Charleston chew, the vanilla. Oh. One. I put yeah. them in the freezer until I'm sure yeah. to break a tooth. Right. It's or a hundred thousand dollar bar. Remember oh, those? Yeah. Oh yeah. Those are good. A yeah. candy bar is yeah. an innocent creature in today's oh, market. Oh, but they're deadly. They're so deadly. Sugar's so bad for us, and yet I can't stop myself. So good. Yeah. I could, I could easily be 20 pounds thinner if I didn't eat sugar. Easily. But that fuck it. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, good talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, Valerie, are you gonna sign some books for us? I'd be happy to sign some books for you guys if you want me to. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs>
I yes. do too. I would be happy to sign some books for you guys. I'll be right outside. Um, I love are it. Are we good? Yeah. Are you guys tired yet? You are amazing. <laughs> I have to tell you, I just, I truly love this book. I think there's something in here for every kind of feeling we have associated with food. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. And Thanks, guys. Thank you.